I feel like that's something, you know, Big Brother would do. Is the whole thing true or parts of it? Nah, Lauren, it happened. Imagine like getting your dream articling job and one of the guys is like, yeah, hey, check this out. <laughs> So Cassie, how how was your childhood? Uh, so, you know, it was pretty comfortable, it was pretty safe. Uh, oh, well that's good, because today, I'm about to ruin it. No, Lauren! Yes. No! <laughs> you should know by now, Don't you're not you safe. Don't you dare! You're never safe when we do videos together. You're right. Okay, time for you to ruin my day. Hopefully you ruin everyone else's childhood too, so I'm not alone. Yeah, I'm taking everybody down with me. Everybody watch it right now. <laughs> Childhoods are gonna Love be that ruined. Mentality. Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> so, I have recently come across a bunch of urban legends that Ooh. were based in true things. Okay, so this is like stories around the campfire, but they're actually true. Yeah, so they're like 10 times worse. Okay, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so we are gamers, you would say. Gamer girls? Like yeah. Gamer girls. Uh -huh. So this first urban legend is based around a vintage video game. So I figured mm -hmm. it was a perfect one to start off with. Vintage video gamers have long traded stories about a coin-operated arcade game circa early 1980s. So in Portland, there was a game titled Polybius? <laughs> Polybius? It allegedly was said to prompt feelings of disorientation, amnesia, uh -huh. game oh, addiction, <laughs> and even thoughts of, um, taking your life. I'm trying to think of a nicer what? way to say that. The machine's cabinet was said to be painted entirely black, and it was rumored that stern looking men would sometimes visit arcades to collect information from the machines before disappearing. Who made this game? Like, was it like Count Chocula? <laughs> I don't know. The C, oh, sorry. No, I do know, maybe. <laughs> so people speculated that it was a CIA experiment. <laughs> no. But they were saying that it was a way to test a psychoactive drug that they were trying what? to test on the public without them knowing. Is the whole thing true or parts of it? A game that controls your mind. I mean, a lot of games do that, but it's so, I, I feel like the idea of being like, I wonder if we could like introduce like a, an entertainment leisure product that's gonna mess people up real bad. I, I, I feel like that's something, you know, Big Brother would do. Everything that's happened this year makes me think that, sure, yes, video games that are testing psychoactive drugs on people. That's That's gotta be true. How did the game box administer the psychoactive properties? Maybe through visuals? No, that would be weird. Oh. Or maybe they like sprayed it. Ooh. <laughs> they sprayed it through the speakers of the game system. Imagine being like alive around then, being like back in the 1980s. Man, our ga your games just aren't the same. We used to get absolutely destroyed <laughs> by them. You guys don't even know. A host of a podcast recently did some investigative work about this and found out that a 12 year old had become sickened during a 28 hour marathon video game contest in Portland in 1981. Where was his parents? Yeah, well one, like I understand that people do like 24 hour streams and stuff now, but this was at an arcade. What was he doing for 28 hours sitting at an arcade machine? He's at 12. 12. And then in parentheses, he apparently drank too much soda and experienced stomach discomfort. Okay, yeah, blame the soda. But then a few days later, Portland area arcades were raided by federal agents who seized the cabinets of arcade games that were being used for gambling. People that knew about the 12 year olds getting sick from the arcade machines and then coincidentally federal agents came in and stole the cabinets of arcade machines, put two and two together and thought that th this is what was happening. That's how the urban legend came about. Oh. So I guess we don't really no, for sure. Nah, Lauren, it happened. Yeah, they could come in and be like, it was for gambling reasons, but we don't know. No, the agent took the machine and they took the data and then the data got classified. Mm -hmm. And now we know the 28 hour gaming 12 year old's mind and how to control it. Ooh. I was just about to say, is that why we're successful on YouTube? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Trying to get <laughs> yeah, in their minds. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. If you were curious of what it might have may have looked like, people have like recreated it too. So this is what it looks like. Okay, how do you do that for 28 hours? There was something, there's something yeah. fishy going on around here, Lauren. There's also like this, which definitely looks Ew. like some sort of mind control. <laughs> 100%. Oh, wait, is this true? No. No, no, look it up. 
Polybius Simpsons. Girl. No. Wait, watch it, watch it. Girl! Wait. <laughs> Wait! You know the memes where the Simpsons predict everything? Yes! Like, I, they were tipped off with this one. Oh my god, I can't believe- I thought somebody photoshopped this. This is ridiculous. Okay, this just got way more interesting. <laughs> okay, have you heard about abandoned Disney parks? No. <laughs> I've never been to a Disney park. You've never been to a Disney park? I- yeah. That makes me so sad. <laughs> I, I, it's a topic for another time because it's quite <laughs> devastating. So in the late 1990s, Disney sought to build a new park called Mowgli's Palace in North Carolina for some reason. And it was drawing its inspiration from the Jungle Book, obviously, and tried to recreate it as a jungle. So there was a lot of disapproving of everybody in the area. They didn't want this park. The locals were disapproving of everything from the resort's theme. Don't know why, I guess they had a problem with jungles. <laughs> no idea. Ew. And they didn't want a major corporation now owning so much of their small town. But despite the outcry, the resort was built anyway, and it opened. But then, one day, it all just stopped, and the park shut down, and nobody's been there since. Until now. <laughs> no, 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 and you won't believe what happened next. Can I just say, though, I was looking up images of this. Is this not the cre one of the weirdest, creepiest... I don't know why it's so unsettling to me looking at this uh, because giant it's a dismembered it's a dismembered head. <laughs> but look how big it's it is. It's rotten there. It's gigantic. I don't know if that's real. But I mean, first of all, would you say that this might be true that there's some Disney park that was built and then shut down with no explanation? I, I mean, yeah, if there was enough like outcry, I feel like they probably would have abandoned it. But usually Disney doesn't make bad investments, so. Yeah, so there's lots of conspiracies, of course, that people think that something happened there or there's some shady business going on. Ooh. But it doesn't matter because none of it is true. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it's based on something that's true. There was no Mowgli's Island. It doesn't exist. You go to North Carolina and try to look for it. It's not there. Somebody made a, <laughs> somebody made a, po a creepypasta post about it and it blew up. So people thought it was real, but it was not. I knew Disney wouldn't make a bad investment like that. Yeah, right? They're too smart for that. Who would do that? Yeah, they made Frozen. Come on. But they did make a place called Discovery Island, which is actually still there outside of the Florida Disney World area. It was basically supposed to kind of be what Animal Kingdom now is. So they built it on this little island. You had to like take a boat to and from it. Look back in the day. Yeah, look, look at all look at all the white people having fun. See, so that's the island. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really nice. So they'd have these big boats that would take you out there. Ooh, flamingos? Oh. Yeah, so they had all different animals. They had flamingos. But this is what it looks like now. No, girl. <laughs> no, what do you mean? <laughs> so the park was shut down. Okay, so this is what the park looked like. So it was kind of small. So... I think what happened was they made it and then they decided to make Animal Kingdom later down the line, which was gonna be way bigger. And they were like contained to this island. They legit though up and left, which doesn't make any sense. Like if if you had plans to go to another area to do like a animal thing, why would you just up and leave everything? There's like, yeah, it's things written on the board still, all the soda stuff still there. So this freaks me out. They literally just left all of the animal food in freezers and it's still there. Like label, what? nobody took anything. They just up and left. <laughs> they just cut their losses and they were like, let's get out of here. Leave the food, leave the pops. <laughs> Leave the flamingo. Wait, did they leave the flamingos? I hope. No, not. they they transported them to Animal Kingdom. Okay, good. I guess they didn't leave in so much of a hurry that they just like up that would have been so sad. They just up and left the animals. But yeah, they up and left. This is all still there, and you can still see it from some of the Disney resorts. Just Wait, like so they did make a bad investment. Yeah. But like that, that seems like a very abrupt up and leave. What happened? They never said. People have asked they never said. and speculated that it's most likely because of the animal kingdom thing. I think maybe they made a bad investment trying to put it all on an island and they realized how limited they were to that small island. Mm, it's the only sense. thing I can think of, but 
It's still weird. I feel like they could bulldoze it and make it into something else. Like, why are they not touching this land? Why did they just let it all stay? Yeah, it was built in 1965 and shut down in 1999. Huh. That was a decent amount. Oh, so it had a pretty good run. Yeah. And then there was another one, which is same kind of story. So I guess they do this a lot. They made a place called River Country Water Park, which opened in 1976 and closed in 2001, which is right around the time that their new water park was built. Mm -hmm. But again, just up and left it. <laughs> Didn't take anything down. That's what these are. So that's like the pool from this place. This is the water slide. It's just... Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, this is like the pirate area, roller coaster. They just... Abandoned things are so creepy. Yeah, they're so creepy. Look at that. Somebody, I mean, somebody definitely put that hat there, I think, I hope. Otherwise, that's really creepy. No, no, that's that's the haunted hat. That's the that haunted no hat. Touches. It's, it's yeah, ghost Mickey. Hat. It's the only thing that didn't rust. Oh it's my completely goodness. untouched. <laughs> now when you go to Disney, you know, you can look for that. You can look for that island. It's still there. Yeah. I'll bring my binoculars when I go for the first time. There you go. Okay, so this next one's a shorter one, but it's in Toronto. Girl. So you may have heard that's that. That's where I, I live. Know. I know. That's why I picked this one. <laughs> okay, so I have heard of this before. I want to see if you've heard of this before, like when I was younger. I live under a rock for a reason, Lauren. This is going to be a straightforward urban legend, but also real. I did not know this was real until I read it. But I had heard of a lawyer that used to throw himself against glass panes on the 24th floor of like one of the big buildings in Toronto to show how strong the windows were <laughs> to, Ooh, to clients. What? Like it was like his party gag. So he would be like, look how strong our windows are. We have so much money. Have us be our your lawyer. And he would like throw himself against the windows to show how strong they were. <laughs> what a salesman. And then basically that hobby of his caught up to him when he crashed through the window and fell to his death in front no. of people. So no. I had heard about this. I don't remember why. I don't know if it was supposed to be like teaching me something when I was a kid. Don't <laughs> tempt fate. Don't tempt don't fate. Don't fly too close to the sun. <laughs> Baby. Wait, why would they teach you that as a child? I don't know. That's a terrible story. I know. I don't know who told, I definitely heard this a long time ago, but it was like actually based on a guy named Gary Hoy, who was a senior partner at a law firm with an office on the 24th floor. And on July 9th, 1993, he did his signature tackle move on the window in front of a bunch of visiting law students who saw him break through the window and fall to his death. Oh my goodness, imagine like getting your dream articling job at your dream firm and one of the guys is like, yeah, hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was like, I don't know, I don't know if I would think that like they were messing with me for a couple minutes. I'd be like, nah, there's no way that that was real. They're testing me to make sure I'm a good lawyer. <laughs> the best ending sentence of this when I found it was at his eulogy, his managing partner called him one of the best and brightest at the firm. <laughs> I was like, was One he of though? the best, <laughs> the brightest, the most aerodynamic we've ever known. <laughs> he will be greatly missed. <laughs> but yeah, I had heard that one before, and I don't even live in Toronto. <laughs> well, I've never heard that one before, but thank you. I yeah. won't run at windows anymore. So I'm sure you've heard of the Candyman. The Candyman? I don't want to know about the Candyman. That sounds scary. <laughs> Do you not know about the Candyman? <laughs> I don't know about the Candyman. <laughs> okay, so I've heard two totally different stories of this, the one that I found here and then one I heard on like a documentary because I'm in this. I, like, I don't know why you I are. like this stuff. It's so weird. <laughs> it's like on a Tuesday. Hey, Cassie, ever heard of the candy? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to retain my childhood, okay? Yeah. <laughs> what did the Candyman do? So the Candyman was actually like a movie franchise. I've never seen it, but he used to attack people when they would go, like the whole story of the movie was if you went to the mirror and said the Candyman's name three times, he would like come in. Kind of like Bloody Mary. Okay, I mean, I've played Bloody Mary, but I don't think I'd ever play Candyman. Yes, I don't even like. I don't want to know what that guy's got. But why he could give you candy? I don't. I don't want it. <laughs> okay. So the movie has nothing to do with the urban legends, but like the actual urban legend of the Candyman, there's two. The whole somebody getting attacked because of the mirror, like saying things in the mirror, came about because there was a woman in Chicago who would call the cops and say that she was getting attacked in her apartment from intruders. And when they got there, they found her dead and they found that the <gasps> intruders got to her through her medicine cabinet mirror. Okay. Because when apartments were built, the medicine cabinet mirror in the bathroom used to hide the pipes. 
So in order for apartment tenants to get in and fix the pipes easily, they could open that, but you could easily get to the apartment and see into the apartment next to you if you both opened it at the same time. So oh. they basically broke in through the apartment next to her, like through a hole through her medicine cabinet. Oh my goodness, and there was candy everywhere. Yeah, I don't know why they named it, can well, the Candyman part, I thought was because of you know the whole like Halloween candy thing that you have to be careful with what Halloween candy you get because there could be poison in it or razor blades yeah. or whatever? That was based off of a guy who killed his son by poisoning his son's Halloween candy and then blamed it on a random neighbor, like saying that he got the candy from a random stranger on Halloween. So all these news stations were thinking that people were poisoning the candy when in reality it was just this one guy who wanted to kill his son and blamed it on everybody. So he was dubbed the candy man and then it like escalated from there. <laughs> Wait, so that the whole Halloween candy thing happened from a guy, it was an inside job. It was an inside job. So like all of my fear as a child of Halloween candy was based, I was, should have just been scared of my own parents. Not yeah, strangers that gave basically. me candy. What does the guy who snuck through the girl's window have to do with the candy man? I don't know. <laughs> it's all <laughs> not connected. This is what happens with urban legends. They get very confusing. <laughs> they get a little mixed up. Yeah. We're just picking breadcrumbs here. Okay, I don't know about you, but my sister <laughs> scarred me for life when I was a kid because she told me to always look in the toilet before I like went to the bathroom because there could be a rat or a snake or a spider in it. <gasps> and it's traumatized me to this day. I have to look, like I have to make sure and look at toilets before I sit down, even at night. Okay, like, so I have to look. Your sister was right because one time, like no. the toilet seat was up and I went to put it down and there was a giant, like actual tarantula in there. Not, no. not an actual tarantula, but like a big, like huge, like, Meow! Like it was, it was trying to bite. I feel like this is payback because I'm ruining your childhood and now you're gonna actually ruin my- yeah. Better keep checking. So the biggest thing was people were scared of rats coming through the toilet, which my biggest fear was snakes, which apparently can happen. <laughs> but okay, don't tell me it can happen. It has. No, it has not. I won't not. say that, even though I just did. <laughs> Wouldn't it have to be like an Olympic swimmer rat? Like that's a lot of water in those pipes. Yeah, it's funny because they set the stage like you'd stagger into the bathroom at 3 a.m. to relieve yourself. Groggy <laughs> with sleep, you lift the lid and position yourself over the toilet. You hear splashing, you turn on the light, you see a rat looking back at you from the bowl. You're never the same again. <laughs> I would never be the same Honestly, again. Honestly, no, if that happened to me, I would probably need therapy. It's like I looked in the toilet and there was a rat in there staring at me. So it's often told in New York City, which is where I used to live. And I can vouch there are rats freaking everywhere. Oh, I just kept reading and it said, alligators and crocodiles have been fo found in the New York sewer system. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, we did, we did not need to know. I now have a new fear. It says, so drain plumbing for toilets is typically three inches in diameter or more. Plenty of space for a rat to climb up. And yes, rats can be somewhat testy when they complete their journey as one aquatic rodent bit the rump of a female victim in Petersburg, Virginia. Ooh. Oh God. Okay. Ooh. Oh, it says in Seattle, the issue is common enough that public officials have given advice on what to do in case you encounter one, which is close the lig lid and flush the toilet. Oh yeah, just flush away your problems. That's <laughs> oh what I always do. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. Well, thank you for ruining everything, Lauren. Thank you for ruining my childhood. You're welcome. Weren't you glad that you knew these things? Cause now, you know, you can stay away from them. The scary thing about these is that they're like feasible. I want to know if anyone in the comments has ever had a rat bite them in the, in the rear. I want to know if anybody has had this toilet like trauma happen to them. I need to know, I need to know where to not visit. And, all, <laughs> and I also need to know that my fears my entire life have been valid, which I'm learning they were. Great, that's a, that's a comforting bedtime story. <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, that's all of the childhood ruining urban legends that I have for us today. Thank you. Make sure if you want to see some other kids' childhoods ruined in a different way to go check out Cassie's video that we did. Link is in the description. As always, if you made it this far in the video, make sure to leave a like before you go. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and hit the notification bell so I don't get lost in the void that is now YouTube. And as always, I will see you guys soon. Bye.